everyone. Um, I'm Angela Lucero. Thank you so much for coming to our workshop today. Um, let me share my screen so we can get started. Okay. So what you should see now is um, <clears throat> is a slide, the Digital Academic, ORCID ID, and Google Scholar profiles. I do have slides to guide us through this presentation, but I also am going to ask some, you know, I'm going to put out some polling questions and things like that. And so if you um, can please go to joinmyquiz.com, which you should see in the upper right area of the screen, and then enter the game code that's 944084. It's on display on the screen right now. Um, that will make it so that you can see the slides on your screen. Even while I talk, you can click the links that I have in the slides. Um, and uh, you can also answer the questions um, that I send out through the presentation. You don't have to use your real name when you are joining this, uh, but if I want to ask for a follow up, I will use the name that you um, type. So just be aware. All right, so people are joining, and that's fantastic. I hope everyone is doing well today. We were just talking about how hot it is outside here in El Paso, if you're in El Paso, or I mean, like it's kind of everywhere right now that's hot outside, right? Um, and I hope that you've had some time to rest this summer and that you're just about ready to um, get to work in the fall. The, I have six people in here. Jenny, does that reflect um, the amount of people that we have in the Zoom session right now? About six? Um, let me see here. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so give me just a second. I'm going to try something. I'm going to move my screen that way. Um, that way it looks like I'm looking at you <clears throat> and I'm not like gazing off to the side or anything. Okay. So it looks like we have about seven. I'm going to get started. Um, Jenny, if uh, could you put the link to um, the quiz and the and the code in the chat, just in case we have any latecomers, we can I can um, point that out to them, or we can paste it again. Yes, ma'am. I got you. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So let's begin. So today we're talking about um, your ORCID ID. And your Google's and Google Scholar profiles, um, and how that contributes to uh, your role as a digital academic. So, um, my colleague Jenny did a great job of introducing me. So I'm not going to um, talk about my name or anything like that. Um, it's there on the screen. There's also my contact information. But I do want to point out that um, I have listed my ORCID. Uh, ID and a link to my Google Scholar profile. And by the end of this workshop, uh, you too will have these things. So that's the end goal. And we're going to get there together. All right. So I want to take, um, I want to find out a little bit more about who's in the audience. So I have um, this poll, you know, which best describes you, you know, do you have a Google Scholar profile? Do you have an ORCID ID? Do you have both of those things? Or do you have neither of those things? And no judgment. I just want to know like where we are right now. Okay, so it looks like um, there's a pretty good spread. Um, uh, some of us have neither. Um, a few of us have a Google Scholar profile and a few of us have an ORCID ID, um, but no one has both. So, I mean, that's that's good because then that means that there's something to gain for everyone in attendance today. Um, what I'll be doing is I'll telling you about the ORCID ID and the Google Scholar, why it matters to um, an academic, you know, in the, I guess, the digital age. And then we'll walk through, um, I'll give you an opportunity to create them. All right, so I have another question for you in attendance. Which describes you best? 
Um, have you published something um, as an author or co-author? I'm thinking about articles, but books, books, ch book chapters, those two. Are you getting ready to submit something for publication? Um, maybe you haven't published anything yet, but you will in the future. Or um, have you received funding to conduct research? That's the last one. Check all that apply to you. So any that apply. All right, and there we go. All right, so most of us hasn't, haven't published anything yet, but you know you will in the future. And, and that sounds about right if most of our attendants are graduate students. Um, someone has received um, uh, funding uh, or you know funding for research. Congratulations, that's super cool. Um, getting ready to submit, that's exciting. And we have one person in here who's published as an author or co-author. Congratulations, that's excellent. Um, so if you're moving forward, you know, like after graduate school, if you're going into academia or, or into some other fields, you know, academic publishing will be a part of, will be like, um, a part of the deal. You know, you'll need to do that to not only publish your findings and share that with the world, but to maintain your position in your institution and to be promoted and to hopefully get tenure. So what you're doing now is preparing for all of that in the future. It's, it's a little piece of that. All right, last question, I promise. So what are you currently doing to ensure that you're getting credit for all of your publications, if you have any? <clears throat> and we won't take uh, 160 seconds. Okay, Tessie puts her whole name on everything, smart. And I'll probably let it go until um, 120 seconds are left um, before I, I put a stop to this. Anna, not sure. Brittany, attending this course, including your full name on everything. Both good things, Brittany. Uh, Academia Marlowe, um, I thought I would get credit automatically. One would think, right? Um, I'll, I'll explain more in just a moment. And lab website, J, I, I don't know what that means. Okay. Okay, Jason, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and your personal CV. Okay, very cool, very cool. All solid. Oh, J is using the lab website. Okay, got it, got it. All right, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna close this question. Thank you. Thank you everyone for um, your contributions. So, oops, sorry about that. So just to um, just to clarify what I'm, uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be clear when we start talking about the Orchid ID and the Google Scholar profile. But you know, you put your name on everything, um, you know, and and send it out into the world. You know, your publications. You send those out into the world and hope that people will know what you did. Um, but there are a few things that we can do to make sure um, that that happens, that people know what you have done, even you know when you've put your whole name on everything that you do. So one of those uh, one of those tools um, is the Orchid ID. So what is an Orchid ID? Um, Orchid, not like the plant, uh, stands for Open Researcher and Contributor ID. So it's a persistent identifier, and what that means, um, I kind of liken it to the ISBN of a book. If you've ever heard of an ISBN for a book, you know, every book and every like edition of a book has its own unique ISBN. So its own sequence of, of numbers. Well, an ORCID ID is like an ISBN, but for a researcher. So that's called a persistent identifier. So you are the only one with this code of, of numbers. Um, and so it's, uh, it's often used, um, you can tag it along, you can put it along with your name um, when you publish things. Um, when you're applying for um, funding, um, you can put it on your CV. And um, 
when you're uh, presenting at a conference, you can you can use it there. And so let me show you the advantage of or, or kind of what it does um, using the example that I have on my slide. So um, could someone give me a, a yes if they can see a page in Firefox that says ORCID? Okay, thanks, Brittany. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, awesome, good. Just want to make sure this is, this thing is working correctly. So this is an example of an ORCID ID page. Um, so see, this is the ORCID ID itself, the sequence of numbers. <clears throat> so see, it, it is kind of like an ISBN, but for a person, a researcher, not a book. Um, and this one is for um, Lawrence Lesser, and this is actually um, a tenured faculty member at UTEP. Uh, he's very good at maintaining his uh, ORCID page. And so let me give you a little tour of, of what's on this page. So there's this one, very crucially, also known as. Um, this is actually one of the uh, one of the very earliest arguments for having a persistent uh, researcher ID is, you know, um, standardizing your name kind of. So this happens a lot, you know, when um, maybe sometimes when people get married or when they um, decide to stop using their middle initial or when they decide to start using like a shortened version of their first name instead of their whole name, kind of like um, Dr. Lesser did. Instead of Lawrence Lesser, he goes by Larry Lesser. Um, I know that, um, let's see, this is this can be a big problem, you know, when you're trying to attribute or when you're trying to claim all of the works that belong to you. So I think... Um, Tessie and Brittany both said that they put their whole name on everything. But, you know, your whole name, like, are you doing that the same way every time? I hope so. But if not, you know, and a persistent um, ID like the ORCID can help um, can help standardize your identity. Um, there's a section for a biography here, and it looks like Dr. Lesser is just pointing us to uh, some pages for his biography. But you can actually put text there if you'd like. Um, and then there are these other um, there are links on the uh, on the side, so websites and social links. If you have those, you can put those there. Um, and let's see, uh, Jenny, you've raised your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, Angela, I just had a real quick question for you because sure. it came in in the chat, and yes. I thought it was kind of pertinent to the also known as. So Tessie asked, "Does this mean that when I publish, I can use any other name I go by as long as I use my ORCID ID when I publish?" Um. So yes. You can do that. I mean, no one's going to tell you, no one's going to, no, there are no rules about like what name you have to use when you publish. And that is what a persistent identifier, you know, does is it makes sure that, you know, any variation that you have used some, you know, in any, in any place where you have published gets attributed to the same like individual, which would be, you know, the person who has your ORCID ID. I hope I'm explaining that. Okay. Is that, is that connecting? Um, you can give me a thumbs up if that's connecting or a, a, a frowny face or a thumbs down or something if that's not quite working. Okay, we have two thumbs up. All right, thanks. Okay, so um, websites and social links. So he's not putting any social links, but um, an advantage to putting your social links is, um, let's see, for uh, one of the attendant attendees, Jason. Jason, you said that you were using um, ResearchGate, I believe. Um, so ResearchGate is not as standardized, you know, as perhaps the ORCID ID. So maybe there are other researchers with your name on ResearchGate. Um, the ORCID ID and, and your page would be a way to say, this is my ResearchGate profile, not these other ones, but this one. It's like to say officially, you know, here are my pages, here are my socials, and, and things like that. Um, let's see. So under employment, you know, there's a section that you can fill out there. And uh, also for education, it's very CV kind of stuff, you know, the, the same kind of stuff that you would put on your on your CV. So invited positions and distinctions, funding, crucially. Um, and then there are other sections that you can add for um, for things like your publications and maybe like your conference presentations and things like that. So you can add to it even more. Um, let's see. So. Da, 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 da. Awesome. 
All right. So I'll talk a little bit more about, I'm going to continue to talk a little bit about the ORCID ID. What are your questions right now? If any. Okay. Well, then let's keep going along. So a little bit more about the ORCID ID. Um, this is like specifically for an audience of you, you know, researchers, graduate students, you know, um, what are the benefits? And so um, one of the things that's on the screen right now, and this is actually, um, you know, a, something that I took from ORCID, the organization from their site, and I have the link down there on the bottom of the slide, um, but they argue more time for research. And this is because when you connect your ORCID ID to your publications, um, so for example, um, if you're submitting to a journal, uh, submitting a manuscript to a journal, um, you know, when they put, when when it gets approved and before it's going to be published, uh, they ask for your researcher IDs. If you put your ORCID in there, a lot of the bigger publishers are reporting, they're like linking out to ORCID, so that automatically gets added to your profile. Um, so that way you don't have to keep adding things, it just kind of populates. Um, name flexibility, so we kind of already talked about that, you know, you can use whatever name you want, you know, if you want to change your name uh, for, for whatever reason, you can still have your identity kind of centralized, standardized using the ORCID ID. Um, you can customize visibility of the things on your profile, so I showed Dr. Lesser's profile. Um, it looks like he does not allow us to see his email address up here or anything like that, but you can, you know, set employment or education, you know, to be private or viewed only to logged in users and things like that. So you can control some, um, there are some privacy controls. Uniquely yours, um, you know, that's kind of what, what I've uh, been trying to get across the whole time. You know, this is, this is going to standardize like, you know, you as an individual, you know, and everything that you've done. Um, let's see, reduced administration burden. You guys don't need to worry about that. But what they're talking about is the institution um, needing to report out on your research and, and what you, on, on your output, you know, when you're a professional. Um, that stuff kind of automatically happens um, when you have an ORCID, um, depending on the institution that you're at. And then um, it's a portable, um, it's a portable profile. So what this means is that you know, well, let me back up. ORCID does not belong to UTEP. Um, and when you create an ORCID ID, it does not belong to an institution. It belongs to you always. So you will not need to create a new one when uh, you graduate from UTEP. If you go to another institution, all you'll need to do is update it, you know. Um, if you are, yeah, you just, you don't need to update it. So it will travel with you and you can continue to build it. So those are my um, those are my key points about the ORCID ID. Um, there are other researcher IDs out there. Um, the reason that I talk about ORCID is because um, ORCID is not restricted to just like one publisher or one field. It's really for everyone. You can use it in you know a lot of different places. Um, and then also. Um, UTEP is a is an ORCID institution, so but that's really more a uh, concern for for faculty members who are having to report on their outputs. So before I continue, um, what are your questions about ORCID or your concerns or anything like that? Do you want me to clarify while we're on the topic? There's actually something that came in the chat, Angela. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, the question is, do you have an example of what this might look like on in a published article? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I see it. Thanks, Brittany. Yes, I do. And I'm I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. It's it's like we're getting there. <laughs> Good question, though. Thank you. Okay, so if there are any other questions, you can drop those in the chat. And, and um, Jenny's keeping an eye on those. So if I don't catch them, you know, she'll tell me about them. But I'm going to keep moving along so that we can talk about the Google Scholar profile. <clears throat> Never mind the weirdness on the slide. All right, so what is a Google Scholar profile? Um, it is, uh, it's a profile for researchers and academics that um, showcases their, pub their academic publications. 
Um, it also shows uh, how many times one's articles have been cited, and it also gives a few uh, publication metrics. So I'm going to show you Dr. Lesser, another good, um, he's, you know, really on top of his, uh, on top of, he's, he's an, a good example of a digital academic. You know, he's on top of his online presence. He has um, a really nicely filled out uh, Google Scholar profile, and that's because he's been active um, for many, many years. So uh, here's, he, he actively has to do this. This is not automatic for people. Um, for for researchers, but let me just give you a tour and show you um, what a like stacked Google Scholar profile looks like. So um, he's added his picture, um, and that is optional, but lots of people do. Um, you can add like the disciplines that you are interested in most. Um, Google Scholar does say whether you've been verified. Um, if you use your UTEP email address, um, that helps verify your um, affiliation with UTEP. Uh, you can link out to your homepage. They give you the option for one link. Um, and then, you know, you can connect yourself with whatever institution you're affiliated with. And then you can update these things. Um, so what Google, what the Google Scholar profile does is it, it um, really lets you kind of customize the information that comes up when we see something like, and I'm not sure if you can see my cursor or my highlighting. Um, let me, I will draw. So like when we see something like this on Google Scholar, it, you know, uh, J.M. Lesser, I don't know who that is, but since Dr. Lesser has set up his Google Scholar profile, if someone clicks on J.M. Lesser, it will lead them here. Um, this is good for, this is good for networking, you know, um, so that other researchers can find you and you can collaborate on research. Um, this is good so that people can read your research. You know, if they're really into one of the papers that you wrote, maybe they want to see if your other research, you know, is also like useful for them or if it's along the same lines. It's, it's a good way to make your work discoverable. All right. And so I want to get to... Um, what Brittany was talking, oh, sorry, a few other things. So it shows cited by, so how many times um, a particular publication has been cited. Um, and this will look different um, among different disciplines. Uh, you'll notice the his, probably his more recent publications don't have as many citations and that's fine, that's normal. Um, it also has this nice graph over here that shows how many times his publications have been cited, um, how, you know, in these different years. It also shows who he's been co-authors with. That's interesting if you're looking for other researchers. And crucially, I think it, you know, not only shows the publications, but it gives a link out to the publications. And, and that's what you really want to be concerned with. You want people to read your work, um, you know, and so if this is a centralized place where a lot of it is going gonna, is gonna to be populated and also going to, you know, provide a link out to the work, that alone, I think, is a reason for setting up one scholar profile. So let's take a look at this actual article. This is his most recent one. So here it is. And so I see uh, the author information up here. And Brittany asked, um, and I'm so glad she did, what does this look like in an actual published article? So depending on the publisher, it might look a little bit different. Um, but we know that Dr. Lesser gave his ORCID ID because when we click on him, on his name, um, we see his ORCID ID tied to him right there. And so we know that it's that Lawrence Lesser, not some other one. And um, his, uh, his ORCID profile is probably being populated with this already. <clears throat> and so Jenny raised, uh, what, Jenny has her hand up. Uh, yes, Jenny? Uh, thank you, Angela. So, yes, in addition, we also had another question from Brittany come in, and mm. it kind of ties to something similar. Um, they're asking, is there any way to link this to our LinkedIn profile, and is that helpful at all? Um, so, I'm not a LinkedIn mm -hmm. expert, um, but I, I know what LinkedIn is. Um, I I would say yes, you know, link your ORCID ID and your Google Scholar profile. Um, I don't I don't think LinkedIn has a place. I mean, they might have a place for you to to list this kind of information or um, or put your CV in, 
Um, but these are links out to other places, you know, like it's like verifying the, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's more evidence. Um, if I were, if I were uh, looking at someone who had applied for a position um, and they had their scholar profile and their ORCID ID linked in, in their LinkedIn profile, um, I would, that would tell me, you know what, like they're, they're prepared, you know, like they're, they're, they're preparing themselves for that publication, that publication track, you know, and they're covering all of their bases because these are like, you know, the very official, well-known ways to, um, ways to like uh, claim your work and things like that. It would just, it would be a, I don't know, it would be like extra points to them in, in my opinion. Um, but like I said, I'm not a LinkedIn uh, expert. If anyone else has experience with LinkedIn or wants to, uh, wants to hop in on that, you're, you're welcome to put your hand up. I'll give you a second. You're welcome, Brittany. I hope that was helpful. I see your message in the chat. Um, but yeah, so like it's linked here. Like, so if someone was just reading the article and I say, oh, lesser, you know, I like the, I like this article. Who is this guy? I just have to click, I just have to click that link and, oh, here it is. Um, you don't always have to click the author, um, I've seen other publications where the ORCID ID is really just hovering next to their name. So it varies depending on the publisher. All right, let's see. Go back. And so um, notice here that, you know, in Google Scholar, or maybe I, I, can, I can just point it out, you know, all we have listed it here is that these are just, you know, academic publications. And it's, it's primarily gonna be like the peer reviewed um, journal articles, you might see um, listings here for books or book chapters, um, but Google Scholar's like bread and butter is really those peer-reviewed um, articles. Um, in an ORCID ID, uh, for, on your ORCID page, you can control what's populated there, you know, things that Google Scholar is not looking for or perhaps not picking up, you can add to your ORCID uh, profile. So um, maybe it's not picking up, uh, let's see, Maybe there's a journal um, that's not very easily discoverable to Google Scholar. Um, there are journals out there like that. Um, it's very, it, it's, it's, you cannot manually add things to your Google Scholar profile that Google Scholar cannot already find. Um, you do have that ability in, um, on the ORCID ID. You know, you can add things that aren't automatically uploaded to your, to your profile. So I think that little bit of extra control, um, is a good example of why these aren't doing the same job. You know, they really are different and they have their own um, purpose. So if you have questions about Google Scholar right now, you can start putting them into the chat or raise your hand. Um, while I just kind of like give my very plainest argument for why you need a Google Scholar profile. Um, I have a meme here that you can, uh, that you can take a look at. But my argument is basically that everyone is, you know, using a Google search and, and Google Scholar. If you want your work to be read um, and you want it to be attributed to you, you know, to be able to claim it and things like that, um, then that's, that's, you know, if nothing else, that's my argument for the Google Scholar profile. All right, uh, your questions, your concerns about Google Scholar profiles? Okay, so if there are no questions, I'm not done yet. This is um, this is a workshop, and I told you that by the end, you would, like me, have an ORCID ID and a Google Scholar profile. So that's what we're going to do now. The first thing we're going to do is make a Google Scholar profile. I have the steps here. So you can, um, now I'll, I will note, you do need a Google like account to make a Scholar profile. So if you don't have a Google account, um, you know, you'll have to create that first. But I know a lot of people do have Google accounts, you know, like a Gmail account or something like that. Um, and you'll need to start with that. Um, I have the link on the screen here. Um, it's in red. It says create your basic profile here. That leads um, to a page where you can start the process. Um, do use your um, UTEP email address when you're creating the Google Scholar profile. Um, after you um, enter like your very basic information, 
you'll get a chance to add publications. If Google Scholar can find any publications with your name on it, it'll ask you to claim them. If none of them are yours, you can just skip right past that. Um, and then you'll have to make your profile public. And when you're done with that, I'd like you to paste your Google Scholar profile uh, URL. Um, there's a link, it says here, and it leads here to this little padlet. So what you'll do is click the plus and then put your Google Scholar profile link there. And I'll put mine in so that there's an example. Um, I'll do that on another page. Um, but I just want to give everyone some time to create their Google Scholar profile. Um, can you, let's see, I see there's things in the action. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, Jenny, thanks for putting the link in the chat. Um, let's see, I'm, there are so many ways for the author, I'm reading a, a comment for the authors to get credit for their publications formally or informally. And how do we differentiate its credibility? That's a great question. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna like assume, um, um, Jinsen, I, I hope I'm saying that, um, I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Let me know, um, if you want to step in and let me know how it's pronounced. Um, so how do we differentiate its credibility? Um, I think you want to stick with, um, with well-known and credible, uh, systems. So, you know, um, a Google Scholar profile, you know, that's a pretty well-known and credible system. Um, if you, if you uh, find that someone has hijacked your name on Google Scholar or like uh, claimed one of your works, they have a process for that. Um, although I've never, like, at least personally, I haven't come across um, examples of people like totally being hijacked or people's work being stolen there. Um, although I could see how that could happen. Um, the ORCID ID, um, the ORCID ID has some like credibility checks worked into it. So um, when you are signed into uh, the ORCID site and you're looking at someone's profile, you'll see how the information was added to uh, the author's profile. So it will say either um, information added by like um, like added manually or information added by institution or information added by publisher. So you can see what they put in there, you know, themselves and what automatically came in from other systems. And so that's supposed to like um, boost the credibility of those entries, you know, like they didn't have control over it. You know, they didn't make it up. It was automatically added because it had their ORCID ID on it. Um, let's see. And so that's the, just to answer the question, like really shortly, I would, you know, really briefly, I would just say to use systems that are well-known and, and credible, you know, and, and these are two that I'm, that I'm presenting today. Let's see, Jenny, thank you for putting the links in the, in the chat. Um, JL is asking, what if we are about to graduate and our UTEP email will not be active for too long? Um, you know, it's just going to be, it's just going to be for, they're, they're going to verify it really quickly. Um, if you want to change your, uh, so you'll you'll access it not based on your UTEP email. You'll access it based on your on your Gmail. You know, like what what email is there for your Google account? So um, so if you change institutions or if you don't go to another institution, you know you can always up that uh, update that later. Um, and I, and also I think your student email will just change after. I don't remember if it's six months or one year. It just, it changes like it's not at minors.utep.edu. It goes at somewhere else. So you can, you can always go in there and update it. It won't, it won't keep you from accessing your scholar profile if you don't have access to that email any longer. Um, thank you, Jenny, for putting the Padlet link there. Um, Tessie is saying, what if I haven't published anything? It won't let me continue with my profile unless I select articles I quote wrote. Okay, so I can see that being a problem. Um, let's see. Back when I created my uh, scholar profile, that was not a that was not like um, a limitation. Um, but you know what, Tessie? Now that you mention it, I remember um, some people have been saying lately that they can't complete the profile. Brittany, okay, yeah, unless they've published something. Okay, so if that's a new thing uh, with uh, Google Scholar profiles now, maybe they're trying to cut down on like the like the bloat of empty profiles. If, if that is the case, um, don't worry about it. Just let me know that you're, um, 
you haven't published anything. I think there were one or two people who have published things, um, you know, and you can put your scholar profile link there. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can put your, pro uh, if you complete your scholar profile, if you don't already have one, you can paste your link in, in the Padlet. Um, but if you haven't published anything, I'm sorry that you can't create your, your scholar profile today. I, that's, um, really unfortunate that they won't let you like go ahead and make the scholar profile ahead of time. Um, but now you know that this is possible, you know, once you have published something, um, even if it's like a dissertation, um, you know, that's something that the Google Scholar will, might eventually be able to, will like will eventually be able to pick up. Um, so as soon as you, you know, you have something like that under your belt, you can go and complete the, the scholar uh, profile. Okay, Anamika. Angela, um, yes. if I may, um, <laughs> I've, I've had the similar experience to what people are saying in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. But my experience was my name is mentioned in, um, like, for example, my partner's dissertation. He, he thanked me in his acknowledgments. And so, therefore, when I tried to create my Google Scholar profile, um, it asked me if that was my work, even though I was just mentioned in his, right? And so that's like some issues that come up. But once you get your publications going, you can definitely go ahead and pick and choose one that, the ones that are yours, and it should be easier from there. Um, and Angela, maybe they can also create their ORCID ID if they can't create um, a Google Scholar. I don't know if that might be possible. Yes, yes, that is. And that's where we're going next. So, um, I know there's one person here who was using and who did say they have a scholar profile and one person who said that they have published. I don't know if they're the same. Um, so I know there's someone in here with a profile already. Um, I put mine on the Padlet, um, which is, which Jenny provided the link to. So my profile's up there. Um, but other mystery Google Scholar profile Haver, um, if you want to put your link up there just so people can see what it looks like, you know, um, I think that would be, uh, I think that would be very kind of you. Um, but let's get to something that everyone can do. Um, I know it says scholar profile. That's my mistake. Clearly, I'm talking about an ORCID ID. So I have the links up here. Um, it, I don't know if it's not possible for um, everyone to click, but um, I'm putting the, uh, okay, Jenny, thank you, is putting that in the chat for me. Okay, so you go here um, to the orchid.org sign-in link, and then just make sure to use your UTEP email address when you're registering. Um, you can add any information that you already have on you. Um, it might even just be your education. That's okay. And, and then that's it. You know, um, once you're, once you've added, um, and you've like finished that process, you can, um, paste your ORCID ID here. And that's linked at the bottom of the page. And that way we all can, you know, see our profiles. I'll go ahead and post my, um, I'll go ahead and post my ORCID ID profile there as well. So I know it's silent. I'm letting you all work on that and um, create your uh, ORCID ID profiles. If you have any questions while you're creating that profile, put it in the chat or, or raise your hand. I do want to know about them and help you troubleshoot if I can while we're here. And I'm keeping an eye on the link that's at the bottom of the page to see um, your ORCID ID start coming in. I put mine there as an example.
All right. I see another ORCID page coming up on um, our Padlet. Fantastic. And it doesn't matter if they're if they're not populated um, with anything yet, you know, you can always go back and, and edit that. You can edit that whenever you need to. Okay. I think. Hmm. Okay, there's a posting here, but it looks like it's just for um, it leads to the sign in page, maybe. So when I say to um, post your ORCID, um, like your ORCID URL, it's the URL for your profile. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, show it on my screen really quickly. Oops. So this thing here, I'm showing it on my screen. It's in the upper left corner. Once you have your ID and your profile created, that's what I mean for you, for your URL, you know, show us your page. Angela, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and drop in um, a brochure that we made just so it's in there, um, and then we can talk about that later, okay? Okay, please do. And I see um, Brittany and Anamika went ahead and put their URLs in the uh, in the chat, and that's super cool. Congratulations. Um, go ahead, Jenny. <laughs> Oh, Jenny, I'm sorry. Did you want me to talk about the brochure or did you want to introduce it? Um, it you can introduce it. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just there in case anyone wants to open it up and save it for yeah. um, as we kind of close up. Yes, definitely. Yes. So, so the, we are winding down. This is the last bit of, of our workshop. You know, um, once you've created the um, ORCID ID and, you know, we've talked about the Google Scholar profile, um, then that's what I wanted to talk about today. These are two very <laughs> excuse me, these are two credible established systems to claim your work, make sure people know what you've done and make sure people can find their way to um, to all of the work that you've done and, and your output. Um, that way, if they want to network with you, if they want to you know, collaborate with you, if they want to hire you, you know, they have all the information and they can see, you know, everything that, that you've got going for you. Um, let's see. And so what Jenny posted in the in the chat is um, there's a PDF. And it's, it links out to um, a brochure that um, that we have for these, um, pardon me, that we have, um, and it has information on the Google Scholar profile and the ORCID ID in case you want to refer to it later. And if you are, um, if you are, you know, in the library or on campus, or on campus, you know, in the next few days, you can drop by and you can pick up a printed one if you'd like. It has QR, I believe it has QR codes that lead to these things. So it's easy to, it's easy to negotiate between paper and, or easier to negotiate between paper and, and the internet. Um, but that's just some supporting information. Um, and then just in case you're not looking at the chat, um, Anamika asked if the session has been recorded. And uh, yes, it has been recorded and you'll receive a link in a few days. Thank you, Jenny, for answering that. Um, but other than that, that's what I had to share with you today. I think that these are good ways to get yourself uh, prepared to, um, you know, showcase your publications, you know, make sure that um, all of the work you do is, is visible and accounted for and that other people can see it as well. Um, I want to thank my colleague Jenny uh, for watching the chat and for posting links and thank you all for your time and for your attention. Um, I hope that you 
I hope that you got something useful out of this and that if you didn't get around to it today or were unable today, that you are able to take advantage of the Google Scholar profile and the ORCID ID very soon. Um, I'll hang out for a little bit in case anyone has further questions um, or issues. Um, but other than that, thank you so much. This has been great and everyone have a great day. Thanks, Arlene. Thanks, Brittany. Okay. All right. Um,